In this video, I'm going to show you how I make Adirondack chairs, which I customize using my CNC machine. For the design of the chair, I started with some chairs that my dad made for us. They're a simple design and they don't fold or anything, which I prefer as it makes for a nice solid chair. I'm not sure where dad got his original design, but I took measurements from these chairs and made a design in SketchUp so that I could figure out my design details. I tweaked dad's design a bit, softening the curves of the seat and adjusting the shape of the back seat slat so that it matched the curve of the backrest. I make my chairs out of standard five quarter by six Western Red Cedar decking boards, which I buy at my local home center. Because of that, the armrests on my design are not quite as wide as the ones on dad's chair. In the SketchUp model here, you can see that I've also designed a footrest that effectively turns a chair into a lounger. The legs of that footrest can fold out to turn it into a small side table if needed. A colleague of mine also asked me to add a fixed side table for a set I made for him, so you can see that here as well. But in this video I'm just going to focus on the chair. After I sorted the design details out in SketchUp, I laid the parts out in my VCarve Pro program so that I could cut them out on my ShopBot CNC machine. That machine has a 4 foot by 8 foot bed and there is more than enough room to cut out all the parts for one chair from four and a half eight foot boards. Using the CNC machine to make Adirondack chairs is overkill for sure, but it's a fast way to cut out the parts and it allows me to customize the chairs. At this point, I think I've made about 30 chairs for the My Tiki Resort in Oscoda, Michigan. And for those chairs, I carved the resort logo in a wide center slat and some tiki heads on the narrower slats in the backrest. I also carved my shop logo on the backrest support. So let's go down into the CNC room that's in the basement of my house. The house was originally built in 1848 and has a low ceiling and stone walls, so I affectionately refer to this room as the CNC cave. I start by carving the board and part outlines into the spoil board of the table. This helps me see where to mount the boards and shows me where I can safely drive screws without fear that a rudder bit will run into a screw while I'm milling parts. With that done, I take five eight foot cedar deck boards and screw them down to the spoil board on the CNC machine. Then I put a 60 degree V bit in the router, zero the bit to the top surface of the boards, and then I run the tool path that marks the outlines of some of the parts, marks some screw holes, and carves the My Tiki logo, Tiki heads, and My Shop logo. It takes about 20 minutes for that program to run. I then switch to a quarter inch straight bit that is used to cut the through holes for the bolts, as well as cut out the part outlines. I leave a small tab of material in a few locations on each part so that parts don't break free as they're cut out. With the parts for one chair cut out, that's when the real fun begins. At this point, I put down another set of boards for the next chair, switch back to the V-bit, and run the program to start carving the next chair. While the CNC machine does its thing, I go into the shop and start working on the set of chair parts from the previous chair. Before someone correctly comments that it's not safe to leave a CNC machine run unattended, I will note that my shop is very close by, and I poke my head back into the CNC room fairly frequently, and I do have a smoke detector over the CNC machine. So while the machine works on carving the next chair, I free the parts from the previous run using my miter saw to make any straight cuts, and using my small bandsaw to cut through the small tabs that were holding the parts in place. The seat slats I cut apart on the table saw, and the sloped pieces for the back supports I cut out on my bandsaw. I then use my jointer to clean up the straight edges on the back slats and the seat back supports. At about that point, I usually have to go back into the CNC room, switch back to the quarter inch straight bit, and run the program to cut out the parts for the next chair. Then it's back into the shop, where I smooth over any curved edges with my spindle sander, and then round over the edges of all the parts using a 3 8 inch round over bit at the router table. Working in parallel with the CNC machine, it takes me about an hour and a half to make all the parts for one chair. 
At this point I have the timing pretty much down and all of the shop work gets done in the time it takes the CNC machine to cut out the next chair, at which point I repeat the process. The last step is that each part gets some final sanding using a random orbit sander. And then with all the parts cut and sanded, I pack them all up using some stretch wrap for transport. Now this set of chairs was made for the My Tiki Resort in Oscoda, Michigan. And I have to say, on-site assembly in this location isn't too hard to take. I start by bolting the front legs to the seat support using some carriage bolts. I then stand those up and install a couple of seat slats. I pre-drill all of the screw holes, but the fact that I've already marked the screw hole locations on the CNC machine makes this pretty easy. Since these chairs are for resort use, I'm putting them together with two and a half inch long decking screws to make sure they're rock solid. After the seat goes together, I attach the back supports, which are also joined to the seats using carriage bolts. I then attach the back rest support and the back slats. Then I put together the little brackets that support the armrests, install the armrests, and then the little supporting brackets at the back of those. And there you have it, a CNC cut Adirondack chair. I'd say it takes me about a half an hour to put each of these together. And once they're all together, it's of course time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the scenery. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.